Let's talk about Courtesans, a quick playing card game with lots of backstabbing. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to preview a card game that's coming from Pandasaurus. So this was sent to me by the folks at Pandasaurus Games. I think it's a game that's already released in Europe, but it's being it's being distributed in North America by Pandasaurus, and it's a game called Courtesans. Now, you got to be careful when you're Googling this word because autocorrect will change it to the English spelling, which has an E instead of an I. It means something totally different in English. This French word is all about people who are coming to visit the Queen's court, in this case, hoping to win her favor. Courtesans is a game that's for between two and five players. I think it plays best with larger play counts. It's a game that kids age eight and up can figure out, and games only take about 20 minutes to play. Let's take a deeper look at Courtesans from Pandasaurus Games. Courtesans is a light card game, and, and the cards are sort of these tall, narrow cards, like tarot style maybe cards, and you've got this cloth board in the middle of the table. That's the queen's court. Uh, my table's not huge here, so there's not a lot of space to work, but what, what you're trying to do in this game is earn the most victory points. At the end of the round, your cards are going to be worth a different amount of points, possibly negative points, depending on what's happening in the Queen's Court. Each player is going to start the game with two missions from these two different decks, the white deck and the blue deck. One mission would typically be, you know, one family has to be fallen from grace or one family has to be esteemed by the court. The other one is all about having more or less of a certain uh, color of card than your neighbor has. And it's a game where, like I said, it's super easy to figure this one out. Each player is going to have three of these cards, and then you have to play all three of them on your turn. One of the cards is going to go in front of you in your tableau. One of the cards is going to the Queen's Court, and one of the cards is going to wind up in another player's tableau. So you've got to make these three plays. I'm playing a card in front of me, a card in front of an opponent, and a card at the Queen's Court. The Queen's Court is a super important, obviously this is the board, it's a super important place in the game and it's going to determine whether the cards in your tableau are going to be worth points or are they going to cost you points. The game plays until all of the cards are exhausted. So like I said, you're going to have three cards, you're going to play one in front of you, one in front of the queen, one in front of an opponent, and then you'll draw three cards for the next turn. Uh, and it just goes around the table like that until these are gone. It looks like a very thick deck, but it doesn't take long before um, these cards start to get depleted. And of course, you're going to pull some cards out depending on the player count. So there's a fewer number of cards when you're only playing with two or three players. Cards played to the Queen's Court can be played above the table or below the table. And if, if you're playing cards above, you're trying to get cards of that suit, cards in that family to be esteemed by the court. And if those cards are esteemed, if you've got more cards on the top than the bottom, of a particular suit, that family is esteemed and each card of that suit that you have in your own tableau will be worth one point. Now if on the other hand there's more cards on the bottom than the top, then that family has fallen from grace, each card of that color in your tableau is going to be worth negative one point. So you could you could start the game and think, oh my goodness, I've got so many points here, but as players, other players start to play cards to the queen's table, you might find out that those points you thought you were getting are going to wind up costing you at the end of the game instead. Most of the cards in the deck, most of the cards in each suit are plain like this one. They don't have any special symbols in the corner. You've just got the background color and the, the animal symbol that tells you what family we're talking about here. Uh, and there are, though, some special cards. There are four different special cards in the deck, uh, a few for each suit. One important card are the noble cards. These ones have, and you might have noticed that earlier on the green card that I was playing, the noble cards have a little crown in the corner with a times two underneath. These count as two cards. Whether you're counting them as points, they could be two negative points if this family has fallen from grace, they count as two cards in the Queen's Court as well, so if you put it above the table, that counts as two instead of one, 
or same thing if you play it below. So the nobles are worth two cards instead of one. You've also got cards with the little mask in the corner and the mask cards are spies. These are super interesting too because you can really fool the other players or bluff them uh, with these spy cards. So spy cards are always played face down. Nobody gets to know what their identity is and once you've played it, it even if you've played it in front of yourself, you can't look back to see what card was played there. Uh, they get played down face down in the Queen's Court, they get played face down in your tableau or your opponent's tableau, so you don't know, other players aren't going to know what suit that is. So you could be secretly trying to uh, force a family to be esteemed or fallen from grace, uh, nobody's going to know what suit that is, they might have to deduce that from the other cards that you're playing. Some of the cards have a sword in the corner, these are assassins, and when you play an assassin, wherever you play it, assassins can discard another card. So if you've got a bad card in your tableau, you want to get rid of it, you play an assassin in front of you. If you've got, if your opponent is getting lots of points, you can assassinate one of their high value cards. You can also, wherever you play this at the queen's table, if you play an assassin, a card anywhere else on the, on the queen's table can be discarded if you want to. This is an optional power. You don't have to, have to use it if you don't want to. Uh, you don't get to see what the spy was if you assassinate a spy, so that might not be the most useful move. But maybe if you don't want that green family to be fallen from grace, you could play this assassin and then take that green card from the bottom that's actually worth two cards in the game. Assassinated cards just get, get discarded back to the box. You finally, the last special kind of card are guards. These guards have shields in the corner and these guards, they can't be assassinated. So you're protected from assassination. No card is going, you're not going to be able to discard this one. So if you play it to the queen's table, that's going to be one that other players can't get rid of. If you play it in front of yourself, you can't get rid of it even if you wanted to. You know, if I played this card in my tableau and then all of a sudden the green family has fallen from grace, I can't get rid of this card. It's going to cost me a point at the end of the round. That really is the whole game. Players are just playing their three cards in their round. One in front of them, one to the table, one to an opponent. Then once there are no cards left to be played, no cards in the deck, no cards in anyone's hand, then you look at, well, are my cards worth points? Are they costing me points? Did I accomplish my secret mission? For example, you must have fewer carps than your nearest neighbor, your left neighbor. Pardon me. Uh, butterflies must be fallen from grace. So I could get up to six points if the, the white cards are fallen from grace and if I've given away lots of carps. Now, if I'm giving away carps, maybe I also want to play carps to get that family to be fallen from grace as well so that those other players are losing points. What skills are you practicing though when you play courtesans? This is a game that does involve some math reasoning. You are trying to, by looking at the cards the player is playing and where they're playing them, figure out, for example, well, what, what suit might this spy be? Uh, what cards do I want to make sure that I don't give that player because it's going to allow him to get extra points or accomplish whatever his goal is? Is he trying to get rid of those carps so that he has fewer carps than his neighbor? Maybe I want to give him some extra ones to, to mess with his plans and to take that sort of away. You're trying to predict as well whether the cards in front of you are going to add points to your total at the end or will they subtract points. So there's definitely some math reasoning and there's fluid reasoning as well. Now fluid reasoning is, is flexible problem solving and it's being able to generate uh, a strategy to solve a problem and, and being able to adjust that strategy as parameters change. And in this case, each turn, those three cards are, are presenting you with a, a new puzzle because you've got to play all of them. It's not, you can't save a card for a later round. You're playing all three of your cards. You, your hand size is three, you're playing all three, so you're not hanging on to anything. So each time you, you pick up those three cards, you are going to be puzzling out, well, where's the best spot for each of those? And sometimes you get really, <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes you might get a bad deal and wind up with three of all the same colors. So you're trying to give yourself points, but you're going to wind up giving your opponents points as well. There's a little bit of deductive reasoning too, meaning that you're trying to figure out what these face down cards are. There are several of these in the deck, and if you're playing with a large play count, they could all be in play if you've got all five players. So there are lots of spies and you need to 
think about, well, what cards is that player playing in order for me to know, well, what what's the likely suit of this face down card? Now, you know, you might get a bad draw, so it might be a little hard to predict, but there is a little bit of deductive reasoning there. And then there's memory involvement too, because you're trying to remember, well, okay, which of the cards in my opponent's tableau did they play? Which did they play in mine? And if you can keep track of that a little bit better, you'll have a better idea of what their goals are in the game. Final thoughts about Courtesans. This game was a huge surprise to me. Uh, it's a game where it's so simple and eight-year-olds can play it, but everyone I've played this game with has just had a great time. It was a huge hit with every group that I tried it out with. Now, I would say better with larger play counts so that you have some choices about where you're going to play that, you know, which opponent is going to get your extra card. But um, what a lot of fun. Very, very, very focused on take that. You know, if you see one player who's collecting a lot of red cards, you're going to want to dump cards to make sure that family's fallen from grace. But then there are opportunities for revenge along the way too. So it's not like you're really you know, being mean in, in those take that elements. Uh, it's just a, a part of the game that, that generated a lot of laughs. Um, very small form factor, and the board itself rolls up, which is great. Plus, you've got those cards that have the foil accents on them, and I like the art style on these cards as well. Uh, the, the art style on, on this woven board. Um, you know, we, we liked the components in the game, uh, and the the take that focus, usually I'm not a guy who really enjoys those take that kind of games, but this one was light enough that it was still a lot of fun. It's so quick to play, it's so simple to teach and to learn, that it's a game I think that could suck in non-gamers too, like folks who don't really play advanced strategy board games, I think could definitely um, get drawn in by this one, both because you've got the fancy cards, you've got the woven board, you've got that take that, that's a lot of fun. Um, what what a great game uh, to introduce people to, I think, just because it's so quick and easy, it's so small, you can carry it anywhere. Um, we had so much fun playing this game. Uh, the downsides maybe are well, one is that the board is kind of wrinkly. It's a cloth board, so it rolls up. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It was really wrinkled when I took it out of the box. I had to put lots of stuff on top of it. It's a little bit flatter now. I'm not sure if the, if I can iron this or not. Um, there's a bit of a coating on the back, and there's no tag on it to say what, what I can do with this cloth. If I spilled something on it, I don't know if I could put it in the wall. I'd probably have to hand wash it, but uh, it is quite a wrinkly board. You might have to work to flatten it out a little bit when you pick this one up. But really, that's the only knock I can think of, and it's not a serious one because this is definitely flat enough to be playable. We had a great time playing Courtesan, so thanks so much to Pandasaurus for sending this review copy my way. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section below the video, or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. BrainsOnGames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go, and the previous ones are already up there. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video, you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time.